actually looking towards is a galaxy cluster halfway to the edge of the universe. Okay. And it has a very strong gravitational field surrounding it. Meanwhile, galaxies behind it, these that are curved into arc shapes, they're light passing through the universe, minding its own business. It sees this distortion in the fabric of space and time, and it curves in response to it. The web is truly a civilization scale mission. It not only changes what we know, but how we think about ourselves. We'll pick up uh, where the Hubble Space Telescope and Spitzer Space Telescopes left off in their capabilities. And it lets us see out through 13 billion years of cosmic time to look at the first generation of galaxies that formed after the Big Bang. Our universe is vast, beyond imagination, and mysterious. We have only explored about 5% of the seemingly infinite universe. As humanity's insatiable curiosity about the universe continues to drive technological advancements, the James Webb Space Telescope emerges as a beacon of scientific progress with its cutting edge instruments. The James Webb Space Telescope has the potential to become the successor to the Hubble Space Telescope, allowing for even deeper cosmic exploration. Launched in December 2021, the JWST boasts an array of advanced instruments, including the near-infrared spectrograph, the near-infrared camera, and the mid-infrared instrument. Unlike its predecessor, the Hubble Space Telescope, the James Webb Space Telescope is optimized to observe the universe in the infrared spectrum. This crucial distinction allows the telescope to penetrate cosmic dust clouds unveiling celestial phenomena that were previously hidden. Webb's main goal is to find the oldest and farthest stars that will help us unlock the mysteries of the universe's early stages. There are hundreds of billions of stars in the known cosmos, and each one has unique characteristics of its own. Some are tiny, some undetectable, and some are so massive that they engulf entire galaxies. Some are even older than the human race. We've noticed many of you just watch and swipe. Show support by subscribing to our channel. In order to find the oldest stars in the cosmos, the James Webb Space Telescope focuses on a time period called the Cosmic Dawn. The first stars and galaxies formed during this period which began between 100 and 250 million years after the Big Bang. Understanding this era is important to discover the mysteries of cosmic evolution. Observing the cosmic dawn using traditional telescopes is difficult due to its continued obstruction by cosmic dust. But the cutting edge tools on the James Webb Telescope are ready to pierce through its cosmic fog and allow astronomers to see the formation of stars and galaxies with never-before-seen clarity. However, astronomers are taken aback by the most recent discovery. The James Webb Space Telescope may have just found the first stars in the universe. Considering how far Hubble has been able to look back in time over decades, most people would think that we would have seen this by now. However, the long and unsuccessful search for these stars has lasted for a very long time. Researchers call them Population 3 stars because sometimes astronomers name things in reverse. Population 3 stars are the oldest, Population 2 is in the middle, and Population 1 is the newest. Our Sun, which is 4.6 billion years old, is a population of one star. An international team just announced that they have found the first evidence of population three stars with the help of the James Webb Space Telescope. Two things were crucial to this finding. One was the simple power of the James Webb Space Telescope. Light travels at a constant speed. Therefore, the farther you go, the farther back in time you may see. The James Webb Space Telescope can see far, far away. They hope to capture a strong and clear spectrum from when the cosmos was just around 400 million years old. 
So, they used the telescope to spy on GNZ-11, a bright, faraway galaxy. The other is a property of stars called metallicity, which is the quantity of metals present in a star. Astronomers classify anything heavier than helium or hydrogen as a metal. Thus, metals are just any sufficiently heavy elements. As they relate to space, the metals contained within and burned by a star are how we categorize these celestial furnaces into their respective populations. Population 1 stars have the highest metallicities, and Population 3 have the lowest. Most heavy elements are produced by stars, either through fusion in their inner layers or in the moments of intense heat when they go supernova. The population 1 stars currently littering the universe were made from the debris left behind when population 2 stars exploded. But population 2 stars had to get their start from older stars, as they have more metals than would have been available just after the Big Bang, but less than population 1. So if population 2 needed more metals than the Big Bang could provide, they must have made use of the remnants of population 3 stars. It is thought that nearly all of the material in population 3 stars is hydrogen and helium, very low metallicity. They would have been truly massive and likely would not have lived very long on star time scales, at least before exploding in the supernovas that researchers believe seeded the entire rest of the universe with metals. So those are the signals that scientists have been searching for very low metallicity, and very old. And in Gen Z11, they believe they found their long sought after signature. Examining the gas halo surrounding the galaxy's periphery, the researchers conclude that population 3 stars may have originated there. In that region, they found a very strong spectral line, which shows up in a spectrum when helium is extremely hot. The problem is that there isn't any metal nearby, a higher metallicity star burning close would typically not cause any of these kind of effects. The team believes it was a population 3 star because something made helium incredibly hot without any metals present. Additionally, the James Webb Space Telescope has taken a fresh picture of Arendelle, the farthest star yet discovered. The JWST was used by scientists to monitor this star in more detail. This star emitted the light we now see some 12.9 billion years ago. So it exists in a realm of space just 9 million years after the Big Bang. Because the universe has expanded in the time it took this light to reach us, Arendelle is now 28 billion light years away from us. The star is discovered by Webb's NICAM instrument to be a big B-type star that is around a million times as bright and more than twice as hot as our Sun. Arendelle is part of the Sunrise Arc Galaxy. This far-off star is now visible to scientists thanks to gravitational lensing. Because of Arendelle's fortunate alignment behind a wrinkling in space-time caused by a huge galaxy cluster, both Hubble and Webb were able to identify it. The galactic cluster is what separates Arendelle and us. In fact, it's so massive that it wraps the fabric of space itself, which produces a magnifying effect. Astronomers can now use the cluster as a magnifying glass by looking through it. But, in addition to observing Arendelle, the JWST can also look into its color spectrum to learn more about its composition. Astronomers discovered indications of a redder, colder companion star lurking in the nearby area. In addition to observing Arendelle, the JWST also found evidence of star-forming regions inside the Sunrise Arc, as well as a number of older star clusters. There's a good chance that Arendelle is a population 3 star if it's a single high-mass star. However, if follow-up studies find that Arendelle is only made up of primordial high hydrogen and helium, 
it would be an important evidence for Population 3 stars. Population 3 stars are thought to have played a crucial role in the enrichment of the early universe, seeding it with the heavier elements essential for the formation of planets and eventually life as we know it. The JWST's ability to analyze the chemical composition of distant celestial objects will be instrumental in confirming the existence of these elusive cosmic ancestors. The James Webb Space Telescope is not only tasked with finding the oldest stars, but also with pushing the observational boundaries to explore the farthest reaches of the universe. Through examining far-off galaxies, the JWST seeks to shed light on the origins and growth of cosmic structures. Because of the telescope's extraordinary sensitivity, Astronomers are able to identify the weak light that early universe galaxies emitted. This makes it possible to put together a thorough chronology of cosmic history, which aids in scientists' understanding of the processes that resulted in the different kinds of galaxies that we see today. Although the discovery of Population 3 stars is very exciting, it's crucial to control our excitement for the time being. To start with, there are other theories as to why this HE21640 line might have occurred. One of these is the possibility of an active galactic nucleus at the GNZ11 galaxy center. Furthermore, the JWST's observations will be needed for the confirmation of the detection, which also has to be followed up on. But that is not an easy task. The team plans to investigate their findings as soon as they can. However, this could mean that one of the main objectives of astrophysics as a whole has been accomplished by researchers. This opens up a whole new realm of scientific research and discovery, if it turns out to be the first accurate detection of a Population 3 star. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more interesting space-related content. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. This is Envision Space, signing off.